come back for a, another quick episode today what I've decided to do is show you guys how I do the binky leashes uh, binky leashes are quite common as you see in the picture um, binky leashes are used to tether the baby's binky or pacifier or nook or whatever you call it uh, tether it to the baby so that it doesn't fall to the ground um, or so that if the baby spits it out it can stay in range so that the baby can put it back in its mouth if it chooses to do so. So um, it's a common thing for um, people to have it in their nursery and I normally embroider on them the names or a little picture or what have you. So today we're going to put a name on a baby leash, a baby binky leash, baby binky leash. We're going to put a name on the baby's binky leash and then um, I'll show you how I put it together. So let's start with uh, the basics. It's just um, a rectangular piece of cotton. Usually I use cotton. Sometimes I'll use flannel. I don't particularly care for flannel, um, but this is cotton and what we know cotton is quite durable in the wash and for years of usage and it doesn't fray even though it's fraying right now but once we sew it together it doesn't fray um and it'll withstand you know running through the washing machine if it gets soiled so that's why i choose to use cotton and this particular one is four inches by ten inches and you'll see this tutorial out there i'm sure as many other people doing it um but in this particular instance we're going to put the baby's name on here so i'll be back one of the first things that I do when I'm making the binky leash is make sure that it's nice and flat. Um, press it with uh, an iron and sometimes I'll even use spray starch. This is my best press. It works pretty good for me. It doesn't leave a lot of residue on the fabric. Um, once I have it nice and pressed flat, I um, measure it off because we're going to put the name on here and I want it centered as centered as possible so in order to achieve that of course we want to measure it off um, and because it's 4 by 10 what we're going to do is eventually fold this in quarters so an inch um, is about as wide as this is going to be and there's uh, the actual clip is an inch wide so that's Part of the reason why we do an inch and it's actually quite a convenient size so in this instance what we're going to do is fold it in half so that we can find the center mark so we're going to fold it in half and make sure that the lines are good and even and then we'll give it a press a light press not a heavy one um and i'm going to give it a light press to help make sure that when I put place my ruler on the fabric it'll line up evenly even if not lined up with the edges because sometimes we cut a little off never fear if we folded it quite evenly then we can just measure from there and then we get a good idea um, of where that line is supposed to be to go down the middle of the binky leash and what I generally do um, is I have to mark the center of it. Now this is only if we're putting embroidering a name on a binky leash. If you have a home embroidery machine, this is the steps. These, sorry, are the steps that I take for putting the name on the binky leash. So uh, this is not for if you're just gonna make a plain binky leash. If you wanna make a plain one, just skip forward a little bit. I'll put the time to skip forward down there at the bottom, but for right now, this is for embroidery, the embroidery process. So. We're going to embroider and we're going to put the name in the middle uh, so what i do is i'll draw a line down the middle and what and this is a fabric disappearing ink pen um so even though i'm writing on the surface it's going to eventually disappear or if i want it to disappear faster i just take a wet cloth and rub it on there and that'll make it disappear uh, but meanwhile there's a line going down the middle of the fabric so that that tells me exactly where my embroidery design is going to be placed okay so now that i have that in place what i have found to be a good a good central point is about two and a half inches down 
is where I want to start on my machine the four inches for the room for the design so what that means is I'll take um, my ruler here and I'll go down two and a half inches and I'll mark it so this is where here right in this area these four inches is where the name or the design is going to be so right here I'm going to mark that so that I'll be able to know where to place it so now that I've drawn a line you see I have basically a line going here and it's starting to disappear already you kind of got to work pretty quick with this particular pen um, but that's where the line is so working quickly Here's my stabilizer, my cut away stabilizer, which has to go on the back of the design. I spray it with some tacky um, spray, quilt basting spray, and that helps hold my stabilizer in place. I put it on here. Now, generally, these steps, I try and have an assistant do this for me. But today, no assistant for the video, so. Um, and here's the hoop for the embroidery and we're going to place this here and here is the central point here on my hoop I also have some extra lines drawn for my reference um, but here's the central here and here's the central there so these are the four inches that I on my machine have to play with to put an embroidery design so the baby's name is going to go right in these this little area here central area so what I'm going to do is line it up with this bottom line here on my line going this way and this side is going to be lined up with the uh, two and a half inches in this way so again this is central now this side is lined up and this is the center so what I'm going to do is move it up and put that black my bottom line on that line and that line there so it's going to be difficult for you to see if I were to show it to you, but you can't see the lines because I have it lying on the grid on those lines so that the design is going to not go across the middle, but sit right up above this line here so that when we put the baby's name and we fold it, the name actually runs down the side of the binky leash. So we make sure that's how I have it. Actually, on this one, I have it different. I have his name going up and down. So I'm going to have to move it. Whereas if you have the name going that way, yes, that's how you would do it. On this one, I actually have it going up and down. So again, I'm going to line it up at the two and a half mark for the top. And then line it up against the fold so that the name is on this side of the fold for the binky leash and that's that and then we uh, go ahead and hoop it now I have my stabilizer is all wrong now because I didn't um, put it on there correctly but it's a really quick uh, name and a pretty small project so um, we shouldn't have any issues and that's that it's hooped and we got it in there good and tight And there's where the two and a half inches down is and then four inches down is where the bottom and on my design which I completely forgot earlier it, the name is actually going down the binky leash so that's why it's hooked this way so we'll go ahead and take it to the machine I'll have the design already loaded into my machine and you guys can watch it stitch out alrighty so the design is already loaded our fabric is already loaded thread is loaded so let's go ahead and start the design
And so now that it's finished, we take it off the machine and we go to the table. Now that we have it off of the embroidery machine and the name is where we wanted it to be, now we take it off the hoop. Set that to the side. And then the stabilizer, we cut it away. Getting kind of close to the embroidery. Not cutting the embroidery. And definitely not cutting your fabric. Now we have an embroidered, um, almost done, being at least embroidered part is done. So I like to press it again just to make sure that all of my um, creases are not there from the hoop. And then that way, I'll fold it again. And then once I fold it again, This time we can get a better crease. I use steam, some people don't. Do it floats your boat. As long as it gets pressed. And then uh, what I like to do is go ahead and fold in the ends. And we're gonna fold in the ends because folding in the ends is what gives it a nice neat finish once it's sewn together. So quarter of an inch roughly. We're going to um, press the ends down by about a quarter of an inch. Watch your fingers. We don't want to get burned. Although burns are quite common in the sewing room. So we have that down. Roughly a quarter of an inch. Hold this down. Roughly a quarter of an inch. Now that that's folded in, we're going to take one side and fold it over to meet in the middle. Okay, take one side and meet it in the middle. Another reason why I like cotton, I can use steam to make sure that the creases are good and crisp. Okay, and now we'll take the other side, fold it over, and this one meets in the middle. Okay, kind of a perfectionist to a certain degree. that in place. All right. I like my ends to match up, so I'll be a little extra here to make sure that that's folded down a good quarter of an inch and lines up. So now is where you go back and you check and you double check. And then, now that that side is folded over, that side is folded over, so you fold this over and look at there. We got a nice lined up binky leash. So, line up your edges. Again, I'm very particular, mainly because I sell these. I don't make these for myself unless I make them for my grandson. Um, 
so even still I like for it to be just so there again I normally don't steam too much over the letters or the thread because sometimes there's some embroidery threads that will that have some rayon in them in it and it'll melt a little bit but um, I'm just double checking making sure things are lining up getting loose threads out the way for the most part and lining it up Let's see. there we go looks right smart and there we have for the most part the binky leash okay now the next step would be the actual tail that holds the pacifier or the binky. And I use um, some really super thin gross grain ribbon. I don't know if you can really see the uh, ridges in that, which shows that it's not the smooth one. I use the smooth one. I have used the smooth one rather as well. This one is a little more stiff for, for uh, uh, looks purposes it, it looks really good because it's good and stiff so I use this one more often than the satiny ribbon kind usually the little girls I'll do the little satiny ribbon kind more often but for the boys I like for it to be a little bit more rigid because they'll wind up being tough on it sometimes so now what I like is to just curl it together to make sure it lays nice and straight and then put the ends together and then lay it, sandwich it right here in between the folds. And there you got the tail that hangs down. What's that about? A hand span. Um, if I were to measure that, this sticks out, what's that? About three inches. A loop that's about three inches long. Okay. And to be sure that that stays just in place where I put it, I'll pin it. Um, so that when I take it to the sewing machine and begin sewing, it'll stay in place. So we're going to pop a pin there and hold that in place. And now what we'll do is take it to the sewing machine. So now that we're at the machine um, and we have our pinky leash already embroidered um, and the tail is pinned in place, I have similar color thread already in the machine and in the bobbin. So what I like to do is start here at the top corner, work my way down, and then sew across a couple of times to definitely secure this tail in place because you don't want this to come out of that binky leash and choke the baby. So we want to go back and forth over that to secure that really well and then go back up the opposite side. Um, so that's what we're going to do here and again we'll go down across and back up the other side so I don't back stitch actually that's another thing I want to point out I don't back stitch because we'll wind up stitching this end down so hold it all together okay nice and neat all the way back and forth um there's a little bit of fray in there so we'll trim that off minor 
and I'll trim these as well. Tidy it up. All right, and now what we'll do is add the actual clip to the top of the binky leash. And here's the, I use alligator clips. These are uh, one inch clips and I'll leave a link um, down in the description of where I got these from there. I got them online um, and I order them by however many I think I'll need. This is a completed binky leash. So what I did was went back here two times, two different rows back and forth, back and forth to make sure that it's good and secure. Um, if you want to have any additional insurance to uh, make sure that these threads don't come out, um, sometimes you can go behind it with the fray block. Uh, what this does is puts a coating on those stitches to make sure they don't fray and come loose. Um, that has been known to help make sure that everything stays together. Although for the most part, we um, by going back over and over these few stitches here on the ends to hold the tail in and to hold the clip on, it's pretty secure. Uh, I've been putting these together for a while and haven't had one come loose yet. So this one is already done for little Solomon and um, hope you guys enjoyed the video, the tutorial on how to put together your own binky leash, especially if you're doing embroidery. Thanks very much and y'all have a good day.